Welcome everyone, here's how you use the Galaxy Z Fold 4. I will have timestamps in the description for each part of the video and if you're wondering, S Pen is not covered in this video but there is a tutorial for S Pen in the description uh, after this video, check it out. Okay, to get this started we have the outside display here and then we have the inside display. So in order to go from the outside to inside display you do need to use two hands unlike the flip 4 where you can use one hand. So what you do is one hand rests on the back side of the display here and then the other hand you're just going to get your thumb pull this way okay so pull outwards pull out and then you can see the inner display is open. Now regardless if you're in the outside or inner display you're going to have these three buttons right here these are used to navigate your Z Fold 4. If you tap on these triple lines buttons this will bring you to multitasking. This will show all applications which are in the background. You can slide across to view all these apps. If you want to close out of an app, just find the app box right here and then slide up to close. Okay, you can do a little flick, boom, and that will close out the app. If you want to close all apps, just tap on close all. When you're in the multitasking, this will show here your recently used apps. You can tap on the app to open it up directly. Now you notice there, I use the home button. So if I open up an app, let's say the internet, and I tap on the home button, it will bring me back to the home screen, okay? You may be wondering though, what if, for example, I open up the settings app and I go into a sub menu, how do I go back to the previous menu? Sure you have this back button here, but that's hard to reach. Or well, you use the back button at the bottom right, and you can see you'll go back in your Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4, nice and easy. And once you get used to those buttons, you're good to go. Now, on the side, we have these physical buttons. So if you long press the power button here, you're going to notice Bixby is activated. So what I want you to do is I want you to change that. We're going to do that by opening up the settings app. We're going to scroll all the way down. We're going to scroll down until we see advanced features. We're then going to find side key. And now press and hold. We're going to select press and hold power off menu. Now, when you long press the power button, you're going to get the power off menu. From here, you can power off, restart, and use the emergency mode. If you, for whatever reason, just don't want to use the power buttons to turn off your device, slide down from the top once, slide down from the top one more time. You're going to see here the power icon. You can tap on this one, and it'll bring you to the exact same menu. Now, sometimes your Z Fold 4 is not responding as a black screen, Whatever issue you may have, you definitely need to learn how to do a force restart. So even if you changed the power button to use the power off menu here, in order to do a force restart, you need to press and hold together the power key and the volume down key together. So I recommend you fold the Z Fold 4 when you do this because it's kind of awkward when the phone is uh, out. So you're going to get your right thumb, rest that on the power. You're then going to get your uh, index finger on your left hand, press that on volume down, like so. Uh, let's do the force restart together. If you're watching on another device, that is. Three, two, one. Press and hold, press and hold, press and hold. And you just keep these two held down, okay? You keep them held down. You do not release. Do not release. You just keep them held down. You can see the black screen. And then from here, the phone should start up on its own, so you can release the buttons. If you wait 10 seconds, 15 seconds, you don't see anything, you can just press and hold the power button here. And now you're going to see the Samsung logo and the phone is going to start back up. Okay, we are back on the home screen. So you're going to see all of your apps right here. And if you slide across, you'll be brought to the next page. If you slide from left to right, you'll be brought to the previous page. If you slide up, you're going to be brought to the app drawer. This is where all of your applications are located. So the reason why there are these two menus is because you can have the applications you use the most on the home screen, and then you can have the applications you use less or you may use in the background in the app drawer. So first thing to keep in mind is when customizing your home screen, you will need to customize both the outside display and the inside display. Why? Let me show you right now. So let's say, I want to move the Play Store icon and I want to move it upwards. I'm going to long press on the Play Store and I'm going to drag 
and drop where I want the icon. But watch this. When I close the display and I unlock the Z Fold 4, the Play Store icon in the uh, outside display here has stayed in the exact same spot. And the vice versa applies. If I drag the gallery, move it, and then I open up the display, the gallery stays in the exact same spot. Okay, so let's actually do some customization. If you want to remove an app from the home screen, long press on the app, you're then going to see remove, just tap on remove, and the app is removed. If you want to add an app from the app drawer to the home screen, find the app, long press, drag to the top, and then drop wherever you would like. If you go to the edge of the page, you can switch the pages, and once you've dropped, you'll be good to go. If you would like to uninstall an app, long press on the app, remove means remove from the home screen, uninstall means completely removing the app from the system itself. So just keep in mind, this uninstall option is not available if your Z Fold 4, uh, the app you're trying to uninstall, was already pre-installed in the device. So for example, if I long press on the Play Store, there is no option to uninstall the Play Store because it was already installed uh, on the device. When we set it up, the Filmic Pro, I installed afterwards, and that's why the uninstall option is available right here. Let's slide down from the top once. And you're gonna notice we have all of the notifications which show here. You're also gonna notice we have these quick toggles for Wi-Fi, sound, Bluetooth, etc. If you slide all the way down, you will see all of these toggles right here. You can slide from right to left to go to the next page and vice versa for the previous page. If you have the brightness slider like uh, right here, if you tap on the plus, you can change which toggle show up. Just long press, drag and drop. Long press, drag and drop to remove. If you want to reset everything, just tap on reset. Tap on done when you're good to go. If you want to remove a notification, just slide from right to left, okay? If you tap on the arrow, you'll see more information on the notification. If you tap on the notification, it will bring it to the application in question, all right? With some of these toggles, if you tap below, let's say the Wi-Fi network, it'll bring it to this pop-up view with the network settings, where you can quickly connect to another network here. Same with Bluetooth, you can connect to another device. Not all options will have this, but sound has it. Rotation has it. Screen recorder has it. A bunch have, but some do not, so just keep that in mind. Let's take the torch as well. You can change the brightness, if you turn on, change the intensity right here. Okay, let's take a screenshot in Galaxy Z Fold 4. There are two ways of doing this. Unfortunately, Samsung haven't really optimized this. I hope in the future there is a better way. But for now, you will need to click and release the power and volume down key. This is kind of tough to do when your phone is folded out. You can see this is kind of awkward. The best way to do this, this will require a lot of practice because the power button is intrusing, uh, intruding and the volume buttons are extruding. Get your middle finger and index finger, and you just want to click and release with a lot of pressure, okay? So use your left hand or right hand if you know you're left-handed to support. Just add a lot of force, okay? You saw right there, my phone locked. That's because I did not add enough pressure to the volume down key. So let's try this one more time. So click release, so click release like so. Three, two, one, click release. And you can see it will take a screenshot. If you have issues, or just the volume down key registers or the phone locks that means you didn't press either button hard enough you must press both buttons at the same time and release at the same time so just make sure you learn to use uh, move your fingers in unison make sure you add a lot of pressure as well and the screenshot will be taken now there is an alternative way to take a screenshot but it's kind of tough i was trying this earlier uh, i'm only getting it like 33 percent of the time so you're going to get your palm and you just want to slide it all the way across the screen so I recommend um, you hold the phone with one hand, of course, and get your palm. And you can see they need to improve it in the software. But when you slide all the way across the screen with your palm, far left to far right, it will take a screenshot. The problem is sometimes it's sliding the phone. When I'm taking a screenshot here, you can see like that is really a big issue. Uh, the only real solution is hoping that Samsung will fix this 
with a software update, but for now, that's the two methods. Now, in the Z Fold 4, you can see I downloaded third-party apps. How do you download third-party apps? Well, you have two app stores in Z Fold 4. You had the Google Play Store and the Samsung Galaxy Store. Me personally, I opened up the Google Play Store and I downloaded my app from there. For you, you may prefer the Galaxy Store. So which one should you actually use? Well, Google Play Store has the most applications available. Therefore, I recommend you use Google Play Store. However, Samsung Store has different rules compared to Google Play Store, which means some applications such as the Epic Games Launcher, Fortnite game, they are only available in the Galaxy Store compared to where they are not available in the Google Play Store. So what I recommend is you use the Google Play Store when you first open up the app, if you have not signed in to your Google account, when you set up the default for, you will be required to do so now. Just tap on sign in. If you don't have an account, you'll have the option to create one. So it's not a big deal. And once you have created the account, you have the game section, you have the app section, and this is where you discover your games and apps. You have the search bar here, where you can search up for whatever app and game you would like. The same applies with the Galaxy Store, game, apps, the search bar will search up for both game and apps. Do keep in mind with the Samsung Galaxy Store, you will need to sign into your Samsung account to use that storefront. Uh, most likely you already did sign in, but if you didn't, you can create a Samsung account using the Google account you used already, or you can sign in with your Google account if you already have an account in the past. All right, let's split screen and multitask in Z Fold 4. So Z Fold 4 is running Android 12 L. This is for tablets, and of course it supports the folding devices. So you're gonna notice something new. Z Fold 3 did not have this, it may do with a software update, but all of my apps are right here. Huh, interesting. So you may be a bit confused, why on earth are these apps at the bottom of the screen? These apps are the apps you added right here, okay? So this is now the dock in Z Fold 4. You open up an app, you're gonna see the dock with all of the apps. So to change these apps, you just move them, okay? So I don't want the gallery, I'm gonna long press the gallery, drag and drop here, but I want the clock. So I'm gonna drag and drop the clock into the dock, okay? And you can see the apps you can add into the dock is more then on the regular page of the home screen, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see that is the limit right there. So in order to split screen multitask, we have three methods on Z Fold 4, which is pretty cool. So the first method, this one you may use most likely, is you're gonna see the apps here. You just go into long press on the app, drag and drop, where you see drop it to open, and you have four sides, bottom, top, left, right. Let's just find where you want to drop. Boom, and we're good to go. The second way to split screen multitask is you see this little white bar here. Oh no, you should be able to see that on video. Just slide to the left and the bar will show up. And you do the same, you drag and drop the app where you would like it to be. Boom. The third way is you go to multitasking, you tap on the app icon in question, and you see open and split screen view. Now, if I tap on this app icon here, you can see you will not be able to add apps to split screen view using uh, the multitasking method. But if you want to start a split screen, just tap on the app icon, open and split screen view, and it will ask for the second app of choice, and boom, you are doing a split screen. Do keep in mind though, it's going to split screen with left and right hand sides by default, uh, whereas using the other two methods, you can customize everything how you would like. So I'm gonna go back to my previous split screen uh, session. You're gonna notice here, uh, this little line. This line is for your recently opened up apps, okay? So this dock is your apps which you placed there, and these apps are the recently used apps. Let's drag and drop. And what you may notice is it's not allowing me to add a fourth app. This is because in the split screen view, there is a limit of three apps. However, you can add even more apps if you use pop-out view. 
So in order to use pop-out view, drag and drop the app to the center of the screen and you see drop here for pop-out view. Now, if you go to the edge, you can resize. Okay, it's a bit finicky. We can resize the pop-out view apps. You see the blue bar? If you long press where the blue bar is, you can move around the pop-up view app. If you tap on the blue bar, we have a bunch of options. So this button here will bring the app into split screen, okay? It will usually bring it out to the closest split screen available. You also have the option to change the opacity of the pop-up view app. Wait for this to close. You have the option to completely minimize the app and it'll give you this little app icon here, which you can move around and you just tap on the app icon to bring it back. You have the option to full screen the app and close. You're gonna notice this option here. This will change the blue bar into buttons. So if I tap on that, you now have the buttons and these options here are the exact same. If you I tap on triple dots, the one new thing is that blue bar icon and that'll bring back the bar. Now I'm going to tap on the blue bar and I'll close out this app. Okay, you're gonna notice we have a triple dots here, a double dots, and then we have all these bars. So get ready, a lot of information is about to be unloaded. So, with the double bars, you can slide across to change the percentage of each app which is on screen, okay? 50, 50, 25, 75, 75, 25. If you slide all the way to the left, you'll close the app on the right, and vice versa applies as well. Now, when it comes to the shrivel dots here, you can do the exact same sliding. We slide all the way to the bottom. Of course, you'll close the bottom app. We slide all the way to the top. You'll close the top apps. Now, if you try and tap on the double dots, it's going to do nothing, okay? But if you tap on the triple dots, it will allow you to change, you can see here, how the multitasking is. So it will rotate everything by 90 degrees, okay? Like so. You can just keep on tapping. Tap, tap, boom. You have the option to favorite this split screen. So let's say you constantly use, what is this thing? This is Galaxy Store, Chrome, and settings at once. Well, if you want quick access in the future, you see Add App Pair 2, you see Taskbar, which is this right here. You have Home Screen and Apps Edge Panel, which is this right here. So let's add to the Taskbar. It says I can't add more than eight apps. So I'm going to move an app out of the taskbar. I'll find my split screen. Favorite, taskbar. And now you have the app pair. When you tap on it, it will bring you straight into the view. So let's go like this. Boom. It's pretty darn cool, guys. Now we have the bars. So we tap on the blue bar here. You have a bunch of different options. So you have the option here to bring the app into pop-out view, where my finger is. You have the option to bring the app to full screen. You have the option to close out the app. You see all these dots? If you tap on all these dots, you're going to have the option to change the app. Uh, you're also going to notice some applications are grayed out. These apps are grayed out because you cannot split screen with those apps, okay? So split screen is cool and all, but if the app does not support split screen, it's a no-go. So if I want to change the gallery, just tap on gallery and I'm good to go. Another thing as well is customizing the edge panel. If you tap on the triple lines, you can edit the edge panel here. And you can, let's say, tap on this one to add, add. If you want to remove an app, you can remove. This right here shows your previously used apps, so you can remove. Remember the app pairs, we have two apps open, three apps open. Again, if you need to add that, let's go back to the pair. Let's tap on the triple dots, favorite, and add to apps edge panel. And you can see it shows up right here. You can just tap and you'll be brought to the edge panel like so. Another thing as well is if you want to use split screen and you want to choose any app, just tap on this triple dots, long press, and you can see cannot open this app in split screen view, so I'll cancel that one. Let's try another app which does support split screen view. Say the phone. Boom. And there you go. You're good to 
go. All right, how do we use the camera in Z Fold 4? So let's open up the camera app. And first thing you notice is this right here. When I fold my phone, it's given me these options. So I will get into those later, but for now let's take a look at the app itself. So we have these different modes. You have the photo, portrait, video, and more. It gives you these pro modes right here. Let's tap on the mode to change. You see this little gallery icon? That will bring you to the gallery app. You can see I have no pictures or videos taken, therefore it won't allow me to go there yet. You have the zooms, so this will just change the camera lenses, okay? You can also slide, do the manual zooms as well if you would like to. I'm going to set this to 1x. You can see the flash option, you can have this on, on or off. You have the timer option. When you set a timer, it will do a countdown where the picture is taken. You have the aspect ratio. So you can choose the highest quality picture and then these lower quality 3x4, 9x16, 1x1, etc. You then have motion photo. So this is a photo which is taken, but it will also take a short video, okay? And then you have filters that you can add as well. Now, cover screen preview. What on earth is that? Well, watch this. Watch how cool this is. Yes, that's right. You can now use the back camera here for selfies. Just imagine how cool that is. Okay, so I tap on the selfie button. Look at this. I'm covering the front camera, but I'm having, <laughs> I'm able to use the back cameras. Okay, look, there's, there's the selfie camera. I'm covering it. When I cover this sensor on the back, it's now being blocked. So this is really cool if you want to take high quality selfie photos, okay? In order to take a picture, you can use the shutter buttons, uh, which are the volume up and down, or you can tap on the shutter button itself. Boom, okay. If I flip the camera across, you just slide right there, and you're now brought to the back right here. Let's go to the video mode. We have here the quality options, so you can change that. We have up to 8K at 24 FPS. You have the aspect ratio I covered earlier. You have super steady mode. So this will reduce the resolution to 4HD60, which is 1080p. U, uh, UHD is a 4K if you're wondering. And of course, 8K is 8K, HD is 30. You have the flash still, but you cannot use filters on the higher resolutions. So we need to lower the resolution. And of course you have the cover screen preview to where if you need the preview right here and then when you need the selfie mode you just tap on that and then you can take videos etc right from the front display all right let's close out of that let's go to the portrait mode so this is the exact same as the regular camera mode but you only have 1x and 3x just bring the subject in question in the foreground and it will blur out the background, okay? This is ready. Just tap on the shutter. I'm just going to add this bokeh. You can see that blur on the back. It didn't do a perfect job because this area isn't blurred, but it is pretty good, okay? And of course, you have the edit tools right here. I'll go into depth later on those. Let's open up the settings. And these camera settings apply for all modes, so you don't need to tap on a specific mode to change the settings here. Picture formats, if you want the highest quality pictures, use raw copies. Save selfies as previewed. So here is the deal. When you look at yourself, you know, in the preview, it will actually flip the picture. You turn on sell, uh, save selfies as previewed, you don't need to use the flip manually. You have the selfie color tone, you can change this to whatever you would like. And you may notice something went wrong with the picture quality, I'll cover that in a second, all right? You have video stabilization, advanced recording options. So HDR10 Plus videos, this only exists if you use the rear camera at 1080p. So if you go to 4K, it will just won't allow you to turn it on. 
reduce file size. Uh, this will not be available if HDR10 Plus is on. Uh, but this will change the format to HEVC. HEVC, if you're wondering, is less used. H.264 is the most commonly used. So if you have a Windows computer, you most likely will not be able to play HEVC. If you have a Mac, iPhone, iPad, you can play HEVC. And you have these other options here. Grid lines, just shows grid lines in the preview. Location tags will add a location to your pictures and videos. Shooting methods, you can use voice commands if you'd like to, using cheese, smile, etc. Floating camera a shutter button. Remember that button we tapped to take a photo, video. You can move that whatever you like. Then show palm. Show the palm and it will uh, take a selfie. Start recording. Let's go back. So if we tap on this button here, it will actually flip the camera. So what you may not realize is there is actually an under display camera here. The quality is not good. I would only ever use this if you were planning on doing video calls and you just have to use this camera. Because don't forget, if you fold the phone, let's unlock. Remember, there is a selfie camera right here, okay? So if for whatever reason you don't want to use the rear camera as the front screen, okay? Then you can always just use that selfie camera, okay? So just fold up like so, flip, and there you go, you are now using this regular selfie camera right here. Now let's take a photo, and when you want to uh, uh, view the photos you've taken, tap on it, and you can see the photo right here. So I'm going to go back to the inner display so we have more room. Let's tap on the pencil. So from here, you have the rotate tool, you have the flip tool, you have the aspect ratio tool, you have the distortion tool, and what this allows you to do is well change the distortion. And from here, you have like the cut tool, so you can just draw what you want to keep, okay? Maybe you want to remove the background from your face, etc. You have the filters, you can change the settings of the photo, like the light balance, brightness, etc., contrast, and then you have the tool which allows you to highlight and uh, play around with the photo. If you want to revert your changes, just tap on revert. If you want to save, tap on save and save one more time. Okay, remember when I was talking about this right here? So what you can do is use this flex mode. You'd rest the phone down, okay? Let's say you want that perfect selfie. You'd bring your face into the you know, preview and you tap on the picture. The downside with this first of all is it's using the under display camera, which is not great. But if you flip around, you're now using the rear camera. Let's say you place this on the table. You're gonna have an ultra steady shot because it's on the table. You tap on the shutter and you're good to go. Now, not all apps will support this mode. However, with Z Fold 4, you can actually force apps to support it, okay? So let's open up, let's say, the Play Store. You see this little icon here, tap on it, and it'll bring it to the Flex Mode Panel Settings. So from here, you just choose whichever apps you would like to have this feature on for. Some apps won't allow it, or they already have the feature, such as Samsung Free. And then when you go to the Flex Mode, you can see Control Your Display. So from here, We'll tap on OK. I'm going to minimize the keyboard. If you tap on this button here, you can use the bottom of the display as a touchpad. You just tap, right click with double tap, OK. Three finger swipe to go to multitasking. You can change the volume, change the brightness. You can also take a screenshot and you can get the control center just like that. It's a pretty cool nifty feature. If you slide up, it'll be brought back to the full screen app view. All right, let's deep dive into the settings app. So we're gonna open up settings. You can see at the top, your name, your Samsung account. This is where you change your Samsung account settings. The connections area. This is where you connect to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. This is where you manage your SIM card. 
This is where you hotspot your device. Sounds of vibration. This is where you change the sound mode. But of course you can click on the volume up and down buttons, tap on the triple dots, and then change the sound modes there as well. You have the ringtone, that's where you can change the ringtone. Same with notification sound and system sound. And you can also change the vibration pattern, notification vibration pattern, etc. Then we have the notification settings. You're going to see the recently sent notifications. Maybe a game is sending you notifications to play the game. You can just tap on the toggle to quickly turn those off. You have the advanced settings option. So you can turn on or off the battery percentage. You have options such as floating notifications. How are those notifications going to look like? Okay, change that right there. Show notification icons. Three most recent is shown by default. Okay. Go to number notifications, it will change to the number notifications only. Let's go back. Let's tap on an app. And you can see, you can change whether or not you want the alert to show sound vibration or just deliver quietly. Let's go to display options. You can change between light and dark mode. You can change the brightness. Adaptive brightness. This is used for, let's say you're inside, you can use low brightness, and when you go outside, you can use a high level brightness. That's what that's used for. You have the eye comfort shield. This is night shift, so it just, change, it just blocks out the blue light and gives you this orange tint. If you tap on the option, custom, you can change the temperature. You see more orange, more blue. Okay. I personally have this set to the max orange when I used uh, my last year's Fold 3. Again, this is the Fold 4, you can see right there in the background. Font size and style, you can change this here. Screen layout and zoom. Okay, so multi-view, you're seeing one area on the left, one area on the right. Standard view is only really used if you're like you know, using a regular phone. I don't recommend you change this. Um, screen timeout, how long it takes before the screen just goes black. I recommend you set this to the highest. And you have stuff like the easy mode. So this just basically makes it like an iPhone. I, I don't want. I wouldn't turn it on. You have the edge panels here. So this is the edge panel. Okay, when it's off, you can't use it. Taskbar, which is the multitasking thing right here. I recommend you keep it on. But if you do use the edge panel, you may want to turn it off. It really is up to you. I'm keeping it on for me. Navigation bar, so you can use swipe gestures or buttons. I personally like the buttons more than swipe gestures, but some people do like the swipe gestures, okay? If you switch to swipe gestures, slide up and flick to go home, slide up and hold on the screen to your vibration, then release your finger to access multitasking. So when you feel that vibration, you can release your finger on the screen. You slide from left to right to go back, or slide from right to left to go back as well. The option if you have the S Pen to block the gestures. I'm basically going to go back to buttons here. You can also change the order for the buttons if you would like to as well. You see touch protection, you can change that. You change the touch sensitivity. By default, it's great on its own. You can also show the battery level, an estimated time until full, and always on display is off. Okay, I'll show how to change always on display in a bit. And then screensaver, so when the phone is turning off or charging, you can have a screensaver show up. Wallpaper and style, this is where we change the wallpaper. Okay, so my wallpapers is going to be the Samsung default ones. Downloaded is not wallpapers you downloaded from the internet, but wallpapers you downloaded from the Explore More Wallpapers area. Color palette changes the colors of your system, okay, you get a preview. And when you're ready to go, you just tap on apply, okay? Let's go to the themes. So if I go to the home screen real quick, take a look at these app icons. If you wanted to theme the app icons, you would change the theme, okay? There's also options to download wallpapers here. Some of these themes are paid, so just keep that in mind. When you're ready, you just tap on it, download, and it'll give you the option to switch. Then you have the home screen here. 
So for some reason, it's not allowing me to change the home screen grid and app screen grid. Usually it does. The folder grid option is working, but in the future, Samsung, uh, Samsung should probably roll out an update to you know, fix that because on clip four, you can change these two options here. Home screen layout. So you can have the home and app screens or just the home screen only. You would only remove the app screen if you just wanted everything on your home screen, okay? I recommend you don't change that. Add media page to home screen. So if you want the Google Discover, which is on the left hand side, you can have that one on or off. I personally recommend you turn off this because I always just swipe it by accident and I've, <laughs> I never use it, if I'm being honest. Add new apps to home screen. So by default, all apps are bought to the app drawer. Um, I just leave it as it is. And you have rotate to landscape mode, slide down, app icon badges. You can mess around with these settings if you would like to. We have the lock screen here. So this is where you change the security, okay? Always on display. You tap on this option here. You can have always on display on or off. If you want the always on display to show always, and you lock, so you fold four, you will see the always on display all the time. This will consume more battery life, of course. When you tap the power button or double tap, uh, you'll be good to go. And the phone's glitched out. It's forced to, <laughs> auto rotation kind of broke there, but oh well. You can also change the clock style as well, for the always on display. And screen orientation, you can change that as well. Biometrics and security. Of course, in the lock screen, you can change the screen lock type right there. But if you need to register your face or fingerprint, you do that in the biometrics and security area. Find my mobile. If this one is on, if someone like steals your phone, they cannot use it without entering the Samsung password. Privacy, this is where you can see where your apps have been recently used. So let's say Google is using loca uh, location a lot. It will say, okay, it will say, and when it says, you can find Google, turn off the location usage. You can also turn off camera access entirely. I wouldn't recommend that because you can't take photos, etc. Similar microphone access. And then diagnostic data, personalization service. I personally recommend you have those off because it just uses more battery. Location, so you can see recent access here. You can see all of the app permissions. So like, does Google need my location all the time? I don't think so. If you wanna tap onto it, you can change these options. It will give you an error message. It will say, if you don't this permission, basic thing, features of your device may no longer function, but yeah, I, I don't think so. If you wanna change that, don't feel bad about it. And let's go to the safety emergency. So this is where you can add your medical info, emergency contacts, go into emergency mode, where you're gonna call the uh, 911, etc. You have accounts and backup. So this right here is where you can manage all of your accounts. It's not just your Google account, it can be all of your email accounts. So if I just tap on add account, you can see Gmail, Google Meet, Microsoft Office, etc. You can add all those in. And it will just mean that when you go to a website, or an app, you can auto sign in with those accounts. This is where you manage your Google account. Sometimes this will be useful two factor authentication if you have that one on. You have advanced features. So, this is where you can add a bunch of features into your device, such as the Dex mode here. Dex mode, I have a dedicated tutorial on. It'll be in uh, how to use the Fold 4 playlist. What it does is when you connect to a monitor or TV, it will give you like this PC style experience. We have continue apps on other devices. So if you own another Android, uh, especially Samsung, let's say you own a browser, etc., you can just go to that web page as it would show up here. The labs, so you can change these options, okay? Flex mode panel, we talked about that one earlier. All right, where you can get, we can rotate the phone like this into flex mode, and you can use the trackpad, etc. Timestamp if you missed that part. You can choose multi-window football apps and full screen and split screen view. So you can force apps to just be multitask compatible regardless. Auto rotate apps, you can change these options here. If you want to force an app into portrait, etc. Motion and gestures. 
you can change these options here okay lift to wake it's like when you lift your phone it will wake up double tap to turn on it means double tap to turn on same with double tap to turn off but keep in mind that only works on the home screen okay palm touch cover the screen with the palm kind of tough to do when you're folded out but something you can do of course keep screen on while viewing what this does is it will just keep the screen on as long as the camera recognizes you're looking at the screen so there'll be no auto lock okay and these other options here I don't recommend you play around with if you're one-handed mode on you can see do this little slide down gesture and the app will be hidden you can resize like so for one hand use move around and of course if you slide back down again a bit finicky there we go it brings it back to the regular mode let's go back again you have all these other options here and i recommend you play around with them your digital well-being and parental controls so this will digital well-being will show your screen time usage how long you're on the screen how many times you unlock the device how many times you charge etc your parental controls if you want to restrict usage for a child if your child is getting a z fold 4 though please adopt me that was a joke and you have the battery usage so if you tap on the battery you can see the usage patterns you can turn on the power saving mode stuff like that you also have the storage so you can see what's using up your storage okay you can also see the memory if you tap on optimize now it will just reduce battery usage clear out the memory as well then you have apps if you tap on the app you can change the app settings such as notifications permissions etc you have the general management change the language text to speech date and time keyboard change the physical keyboard and physical mouse settings you then have the accessibility options so if you need accessibility stuff you can change such as hearing enhancements accessibility button if you need etc software update this is where you upgrade the software tips will bring you to an external website with a bunch of tips and tricks for your phone but you have this video so that's not needed and about phone will show you your phone number and all this other information right here all right that covers everything bit of a longer video uh, if you want to i'll have a playlist in the description for a bunch of other tutorials and how to's for the z fold 4 i did not cover how to use the s pen because this video would be over now i don't, I don't want it to be too long okay uh, S Pen tutorial in the description and also a bunch of these features I do go even more in depth with those videos okay so with that being said thanks for watching see you guys later bye bye